Oh, of course we are. Of course we are. Hello, hello. Welcome on into another Monday Live of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. And I'm Matt. Unfortunately, Sarah is not going to be joining us tonight. She uh, has had a massive headache all day and is going to stay in bed and try to get some rest and try to get that headache to go away. So she's here with us in spirit, but not in reality. <laughs> this is true. Well, tonight, obviously, is best bacon with your whiskey. So obviously, hopefully all of them, but I guess we'll find out. We have no idea which ones we just pulled a bunch of different things of all genres of whiskey and we'll see what we figure out yeah so i know we said last year was killing. unfortunately our tilling rep uh, had a cancel on us so what he said he'll make it up to us over the next month or two we'll have tilling on so it's not going anywhere we just aren't there yet so let's see who is in the chat let's see what we got here we got mark jg craig f kilko linux cat donald rance charles asper one lost cause Spencer Mav, Jeremy Burns, Steve A, Robot Scott, DJ Beacon, uh, the Whiskey Friend Alan. Always good to see in here. I know it's the middle of the night there over in the UK. Uh, let's see here. Michael J, Ben Demon Hunter. Let's see here. Let's see, buddy. Uh, the Master Drum, Jason's in here. It's good to see you. Um, see. Karen B. Ford. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. Ben Stahl, David Jackson, good to see you. That's one of our newer subs. Good to see you in here for sure. Uh, hopefully I got everybody. All right, so hopefully a bunch of you guys made bacon tonight because obviously you need to have bacon for sure. Oh, there's Emily Chambers. Sorry, I missed you there. Oh, yeah, you know why? Because my, sometimes my phone does not like to update the chat. Hello, Trudy. Yeah, there's a bunch of you more came in. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so we got Matthew McNabb, Jason Coates. Uh, oh, this is a new one. Max and Taz Divine. Good to see you. All right. Uh, let's see. Arthur Lopez. All right. So hopefully you guys made bacon and everything for this evening. And I guess if you guys want, we just we just put a bunch of whiskeys out and we're just going to try them and if, see what if you guys have suggestions of what you want us to try that we've got sitting here in front of us. We've got, like I said, pretty much every genre. I just, just throw out a genre. We can start with that if that works for you guys and we'll go with there. So, what I we start start with? maybe uh, rye or bourbon. Okay. We kind of work our way towards uh, malt. That's All personal right. preference. But, works and, you know, me. honestly, I've been looking to try this rye and rumba again for a while. So, I'm going to yeah. dig out the Oak and Eden. We can do that. Sounds good. Yeah. So this is obviously our, our buddy Joe, who is the uh, owner of Oak and Eden. This makes this delicious. He's been here. We had been with him last February, and he actually introduced us before it made the market, which was really cool to this one. And we actually compared this against the Angel's Envy one. This is actually, we think it's better than Angel's Envy's ride. A lot better. Yeah. And not on top of that, he's also a whiskey psalm in our class with us. So yeah, Joe's awesome. If you guys haven't had uh, anything from Oak and Eden, give it a whirl. I think everything I make is really good. Uh, just really interesting, unique things. So good stuff. So let's give this a try. See what we think. All right. I'll get Rob Davies in there now. Trey Coots. Good to see you guys. Let's see Jermaine Compton. All right. So let's see here. So we've got to grab some bacon. Let's see what we got. So if you're a fan of the Angels Envy Rye, if you enjoy that, um, sweetness on top of that rye spice uh this is one that you could also pick up if you're having a hard time finding that angels envy rye like my restaurant mm -hmm. is right now that's true um, this rye and rumba is kind of the same thought process right they they soaked the sticks they soaked their staves in um in rum barrels for a little while yeah and then put them into the whiskey. Uh, american oak that they used on this one yeah Oh, you got Pit Face Barbecue, which is our buddy Brian. Good to see you. Obviously, check it out. Anything from Pit Face, it's amazing. Ice House, the sweet tea. Good to see you in here. I haven't seen in a while, Tim. Mm. Let's see. Who else did we catch in here? I know this is somebody else. William Devilar, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, Kitty. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, Kitty. Oh, yeah. Tim's favorite one, the Oak and Eden, is the Ryan Rumba. Oh, yeah, Eric, um, good to see you. Honestly, one of mine, one of my favorites as well. I'm a big fan of the Ryan Rumba. I'm not That's typically a, a rye guy, but uh, the added sweetness is really mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I, I like everything. Well, 
I like the cab soaked one a lot. Their bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, I like the yeah, wheat. I think I still have. Yeah, that new wheat one they had that we got to try. What was that? September? Something like mm -hmm. that. Was freaking awesome. That one was really good too. Yeah, I like that one. I got that one downstairs. Yeah, I still have the cab soaked mm. and the toasted oat. Mm hmm. And there's the bacon kitties. Yeah, we got them all over the place. Mm. Hey, Nick Foles, how's it going? Mm. Frozen chocolate is made. I bet it is. Mm hmm. It's very nice. Adds a nice little sweet touch to the bacon. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. It doesn't do anything mind blowing, but very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, but I think no, but the meat the meat is a nice complement to it. Definitely. As it typically is. Yep, yep, yep. Mm. I, I do think I am going to grab some bookers, though, real quick, because Brian's in there. We've got to get some bookers for Brian. That's fair. Oh, actually, we'll, we'll walk away. I'll let the cat be right there for a second. Though. Yeah, this is uh, – oh, look, there's the, there's the bacon kitty, everybody, and just – he's going to go to town. That's what bacon kitty does. This is actually – a bottle that Brian actually gave me is this caffeine. There's a little bit left in there, which I save enough in there just for so we can review it. But there's enough in there for me to pour it some tonight. So there's a good pop on it, though. We got that going for us. All right. So we got a lot of whiskey to get through. So obviously, we're making tiny pours this evening for all. Oh, yeah. Always, always. Uh, so I grabbed out. The first bookers that I found uh, was the Kentucky Chew. Oh, there you go. So, so this is Kathleen's batch. I don't know if I said that or not, but that's 2018.01. All right. Oh, I love bookers. Yes, Brian. Okay, good. I did miss. Okay, yes. It is the Kathleen's batch, 2018-01. Uh, mm. All right. So let's see here. I lost my live chat here. Here we go. Mm. I don't think Bacon Kitty will ever need a new home. <laughs> yeah, yes, we'll make bacon for the girls. And when they're ready, we'll make bacon for the girls. They uh, when it's bribery time, then they get their bacon. Watch out for my camera with dog. Hmm. 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 Oh, see, now that's 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 more of a magical journey to me. Agree. Yeah, I like that better. The Bookers. Mm. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Bookers, then I think for comparison, I'm gonna pour a little bit of this uh, Rangers Creek Cast Strength Bourbon. What the hell, there it is. Mm. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I opened this up for the first time when I was over on um, Scott My Bourbon Journeys show on Tuesday, talking about. Texas whiskey, but yeah, this is the cast strength Ranger Creek. This thing is two years, three months, comes in at 63.6%. Per, uh, percent. So 127.2 proof. This is a batch one cast strength. So this is from a full 53 gallon barrel, whereas our original stuff was from the five gallon barrels. So this would be nice. Hey, Chris Beaton, Robert Beagle. Mm. Oh, yes, don't worry. Our bag will definitely be happening tonight. Don't worry about that at all. But if we go to Pete now, it'll, it'll be the evening will be not yeah. weird, but it will we won't be able to do much else besides the Pete after that. So you I'll start going down that glorious rabbit hole at some point. Don't you worry about that. That's right. What goes best with Bookers? Another Bookers. Mm. Oh yeah, Al and the whiskey friend. Yeah, that country ham. Oh, that stuff's awesome. We may have to grab that in a little bit. That's in the other room. The high rise for was Marshall for my. Or a single barrel pick? Yeah, I could grab a whole rose of single barrel pick. Could certainly do that too. I know I've got uh, one from I Whiskey She Wines that's sitting over here of that. Let's see. Let me grab that. Okay, so this one is from Bobby and Sam. This is a four rose of single barrel. It is a OBSK, eight years, one month, 60 corn. 35 rye, 5 malted barley, 61.9%. So let's see here. I sound like Bill tonight. Oh, 
I don't know. That, that could be dangerous. If I, if I, as long as I don't move my bar, I think we're in good shape. If I move the bar, I think we're in serious trouble. So let's not do that. Yeah, let's not do that. Hmm. Ah, the Mirage uh, pick. Oh, so you've been on in the seventeen ninety two with Volvo. It's it's freaking great. I've got a ball of it hidden away in the other room. Of course, I've got several seventeen ninety two foolproof picks in the other room of foolproofs and uh, bottle and bond. Multiple picks of those. Both of those. Exactly. All right. I want a new first story. You played a minor league account tonight. A mine was a DEFCON 2 the whole fuck numbers and balancing short ledgers. Oh, duh. Accounting sucks hard. I already, I can tell you that. That's why whiskey is way more fun than accounting. Every day, it's definitely better. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. We were talking about the Oxmoor Oysters the other day with Jason in, our, in the middle of the night. We did our three, three and a half hour stream from like midnight to 3.30 in the morning. Whatever asked nine time we were up on Friday night. It was a lot of fun though. Oh, I guess. All right. So let's see how this is. I, I like the Booker's far superior to the Ranger Creek. That's not a surprise to, to me, but. All right. Let's see here. What do we got? The Ranger Creek still has this as a greenness to the nose. Yeah. When you compare it to Booker's, which is four years older. Mm hmm. Yeah, that Booker smells good. Yeah. Somebody asked what the best Booker's is. The best Booker's is whichever Booker's you like best, really. Honestly, there's so much difference True. between them year to year. I mean, even within each year, each release is its own beast. Um, there's one for every palette. I can tell you that for sure. Ooh. Mm. That Four Roses is really good with it. I mm. do like that. Eric was asking to do that Johnny Walker rye cask. Um, I will put that in when we start with malts. Yes, just remind me and I'll grab it. I do have a cigar blend, but it's not opened. It's hidden away. At some point, we will open the cigar blend. I mean, it is absolutely buried. Oh, the Glen Scotia Victoriana. Oh, that's a great one, DJ Beacon. I really like that one. I know me and I think William Devilar had a nice chat one night on Discord for about an hour about it. It's it's pretty magical that one. Uh, so yeah, I would agree. The Booker's and the Four Roses are definitely superior to the Ranger Creek when you compare them that way. Yeah, I think I like the Four Roses a little bit better. I think it's because that high rye and it really just makes it pop a little bit better. I like that. That's really good. All right, so let's see here. What else do we go to now? Oh, you know what another good one would be? The Lone Elm would be a good one, too. Ooh. I'm going to pull that Lone Elm out. Matt, you're not wrong about that. I think this is going to be magical. And honestly, anytime we have a chance to mention that thing. Yes. Lone Elm. Magical Sarah. friends down in... Uh... Well, other side of Dallas, making this really amazing wheat whiskey. Uh, they're doing single barrels in a small batch. Their small batch is all right. It's chill filtered. Their single barrels are not, and some of them are just dark and delicious. Um, the answer to your question, William Devlar, is yes. That that That's part of your supplies for the company. Like, the major part of your expenses, to be real honest. Besides... So you're asking Equipment and all that stuff, but yeah, you can take all—all all of that is tax deductible. Of course, you have to have to make money first, so it doesn't really matter till that happens. So hopefully, this year we'll get to a thousand, and that'll be that. Although I will say it's done quite well in the last uh, what eighteen hours or so. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, the last, last week, 19, last twenty-four, the last week we've been really, really well. Yeah, that's true. The last week's been pretty great, but the last thirty yeah. have been really, really good. Yep. Yeah, if you guys haven't had a chance to watch our uh, how to pick the you know the great list, uh, great liquor store that we released yesterday, you should definitely go back and watch it. That's an awesome episode. I know Phil uh, Captain Three D had asked me earlier today. He goes, well, "Can you go back and actually just film all the bottles?" I'm like, "Yes." He, people like apparently want to see that. I'm like, we can definitely. You guys want to see that? We can I'm do a little. Be thrilled to have us come just 
do a big bottle thing. He's got an awesome selection in that store. We can definitely do a slower motion uh, bottle tour for sure. I'm sure he'd love that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, no. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Definitely bottle porn. Exactly, Jeremy Burns. Hmm. Okay. Oh, it's in mm. Oh. Mm. Those are super meaty. Yeah. That's not what I expected at all. Even more of an umami character came forward. Yeah. I was expecting the sweetness to come forward. And you're, you're not wrong. It actually became even more meaty somehow. That's incredible. That's very nice. Yeah. I like that. It's an unexpected turn. Yeah. Does not expect that whatsoever. But in a good way. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Liquor store owners should totally watch something, but like you said, you know they don't. We don't need it. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. But it does tell you a good way to pick one if in your local area that acts like that. So, yeah, that's like I said, they're incredible customer service there for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. I would like you to be back over there, please. All right. So, let's see here. Mm. Let's do the peanut butter. Oh, yeah. Screwball. So we were talking the other night. And I, I guess saw it here somewhere. Apparently, Screwball now has overtaken Fireball for sale. Really? Insane. That is insane. So actually, it's funny. So I was at Goody Goody one night, maybe oh, a year, year and a half ago, something like that. And uh, one of the buddies used to work with the Kmart. Back in the day, which is funny, is the goody goody that's where it's not it used to be a cam art when I was a kid. I worked there when I was in high school. And uh, I ran into a guy who used to be a security guard there. And I guess his buddy is actually responsible for this whiskey. Or really? flavored whiskey, screwball, the peanut butter. So I had right around the wash. And so, yeah, this is interesting. This is my first encounter with uh, with this. Yeah, so it's crazy stories about the screwball. You want know, to smell it? Give the kitty the screwball. What do you think? It's like, give me the bacon. Give me the damn peanut butter. I don't want that. That's interesting smelling. That does smell like distilled peanut butter. Hey, Scott, my bourbon journey. Good to see you. There's a there's an obvious alcohol burn to it, but. <laughs> oh, that's actually. Somebody whispered butterscotch. Totally. That's really good. Stay back. That's stupid. Silly good. kitty cat. Mm. I don't see why not, Craig. I think you should definitely get it. So if you guys aren't participating in uh, the Whiskey Dicks Whiskey 2020. Um, she didn't make a good face. The Pound 2020 Whiskey Challenge that he's got going on over there. Hashtag, Matt. Hashtag. Yeah, I, I know what it is. I like the word pound better because it sounds funnier. Oh, I'm scared to drink this. I like it. It doesn't smell bad. Mm. It doesn't smell good. Mm. I enjoy the hell out of this. We were mixing with blueberry vodka on the stream of the night. It was delicious. It made a PB&J. It was quite tasty. Oh, Damn right. Okay. See, she said pound that all the way. Kitty cat. Goes, I will give you more bacon in a minute. Calm down. Pound with you tell them sounds way better. I actually really like that. That's really nice. Mmm. Oh, and with the bacon, that's really good. That's really good. It makes it really sweet. But really good. That is fantastic. Mmm. All right. You know what? I ain't mad about that. No, that turned out really, really good. I that I figured it was gonna go really good or really bad. Didn't know which way. Thankfully, really good, not bad. It went wow. really well. That was. Pleasant I think that's surprise. gonna be the surprise of the evening. Okay, that I'm done with. She made less of a face. That's she always a made a face. I'm not a fan. I don't like the peanut butter, huh? I'm going away now. It's like, I got to leave. 
it's official bakes everything better. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm. Well, I like it. Peanut butter and bacon breakfast shots. Ooh, bacon soaked in screwball could be delicious. Mm. I may have to set a little bit of that aside in the glass and see what happens. I like this one. Well, I like that plan better than dumping that into my dump glass. So, yeah. So I'll put a little piece of bacon here in the screwball and we'll test it like half an hour. Just a little yeah. bit broken in the bottom is all I did, but yeah, I agree. Just a stick a piece in there. We'll let that sit. See how that turns out. That should be interesting. Sounds horrible. It could, it's going to really turn magical. Who knows? It could also be terrible. We are, we're here to find out. Exactly. A water break real quick. Yes, water is a good idea. You should always drink water. Lots of water. Lots and lots of water. Sam, I'm talking to you. <laughs> yes. Which was a good stream for they had yesterday for their one year anniversary. Speaking of, that was fun. We're gonna have our one year anniversary celebration after Jason the Mash and Drums live on Wednesday night. So sometime after nine, whenever Jason finishes up. Should be a blast. We'll have a, bunch, we'll have a few other YouTube channels joining us. It should be a good time. All right. So what do we want to go to now? Well, we still have like Iron Root Icarus that yeah. we could do, and uh, well, uh, but I'd say let's do like maybe the Crown Royal that single barrel. Yeah, let's do that. Canadian. Yeah. So this is an actual crown with a real proof, a hundred and three, which is nice. So this is the hand selected barrel, kind of at a hundred and three proof, and for a long time it was a Texas only product, but I think you can get in other states as far as I know. But this stuff is actually good. Shockingly, my buddy Alan, he uh, he must have gone through like 50 bottles of this stuff. Then I introduced him to scotch, and he, it's uh, it, it's changed his life. He has a lot of scotch now, not so much crown. Good night, Alan. Thanks for coming, really appreciate it. Yeah, you got to get up in four hours for bet for work. Yeah, that would probably be best. Mm. All right, let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. One of the best smelling crowns I've had in a while. There actually is quite a bit going on in there besides just that high proof ethanol. Hmm. Interesting. Not bad, not great. Hey, Kill Joel. Makes it super buttery. Sit down. That's what I'd say. Very buttery. Not bad. Corona whiskey? No, I don't think we should mix Corona whiskey. I, I think they'll end poorly. Not that you shouldn't try for your own scientific experiments, but we'll not be trying that this evening. That's not bad. It's not bad. It makes, like I said, it makes it super buttery. Yeah. Hmm. It's nothing wrong with that, but there's nothing really exciting about that either no but there's nothing exciting about the pairing right like no yeah, yeah exactly yeah no it's, it's a good whiskey it's just it's not an exciting pairing it, it, it didn't accentuate much it just made it buttery that's about it yep um you scott you robot scott you should be able to find blends from bell and Aruba, more than likely yes but obviously it depends what the shop's got in stock but they should have it Eric wants me to try the Balcones rye. I, I could get the rye out. I, I can do that for you, Eric. Let me go see what I can get here. It's probably not a bad idea with the nice chocolatey notes of the rye. Can't hurt. I gotta move some a couple things here real quick. If it's really good, I'll try to dig my sample out too, because I know I have one somewhere. Okay. So I got the rye, Balcones rye. See, this is the fun thing is when we need nights like this where we just get whiskey suggestions. Right. <laughs> it's like, go grab this. Go grab that. All right. So this is the Balcones Texas Rye, which is a 100% rye, and it's a 100% uh, uh, <clears throat> ABV, 100 proof. 
and it's made up of four different rye, which is made up of the Elbon rye, well, also with uh, crystal chocolate and roasted rye. So this is one of my favorite ryes too, as far as the beautiful nut. Now the cast strength is magical, but I love this one a lot because this one's actually like thirty bucks. Yeah, and right. Price point's amazing. It's really good and really different. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Lezak. How's it going? Somebody's saying High West Campfire. Or Jason's oh. saying High West Campfire. That sounds pretty yummy, too. You definitely get Campfire out. <laughs> Charles Ashworth says, one of the few channels that can make it possible. That's huh. not it's not wrong, man. It's the collection at that oh. many houses is insanity. Yeah. Yeah, Eric, call it. Yeah. Very leathery. Um... Didn't really bring out the chocolate I expected. More of the leather and brown sugar notes. Yeah, exactly the leather and brown sugar notes. Yeah. Hey, DJ11 and Scott Turner. How's it going? Let's see here. <laughs> ah. Let's see. I was looking to get some. Yeah, uh, hopefully you enjoy the to eat while staying in the corn neighborhood. We have not done a wine finish tonight, Emily Chambers, but we can certainly make that happen in the future. Absolutely. Not a problem. I absolutely want to do a wine finish night. We certainly will. Yeah. And we'll bust out some wines to actually talk yeah. about the wines as well. That'd be fun. Uh, I'm actually, I'm working on that. I'm getting, I'm getting some wines together for it. Yes. Uh, I'm going to pour me some Iron Root Icarus. I think new, new people that don't know, Will is also a wine sommelier. So he knows all that awesome stuff too. But uh, if you guys don't know, I also thoroughly enjoy wine, beer, and all other spirits. So I just like alcohol in general. Right. So I'm always excited to learn new things. So I like to listen to Eric Wait when he uh, likes to talk about all the crazy grapes and stuff. So Yeah, Eric's channel is a lot of fun. And I, oh, learn, I learn a lot from him every week. It's fun times. <sighs> It's it's the ultimate nerd out experience. For, it's freaking awesome. Yep. I do love Eric, and plus you never know what Eric's gonna do. It's it's absolutely usually hysterical as well. So you just never know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So this is the Iron Icarus oh. from uh, 2019. 39 months, 105 proof, finished in port casks and in Isla heated barrels. So let's see how it goes. Hello, Dram Band. Thank you, ma'am. Good to see you. That Pete's just kind of a wisp back in the back, but my goodness, I enjoy the heck out of that. Oh, this is going to be good. Mm. Oh, yeah. That Pete and Port makes it so good. Mmm. 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 Okay. Mm. Really good. Yep. Mm-hmm. I remember this mm. one performing really well on our barbecue episode, too. Yeah, it was awesome with the uh, the burnt ends. That was magical with the burnt ends. Yeah. And this this is the same for the same reasons, right? Like, we got that umami in the bacon, mm -hmm. the salty in the bacon. Yeah, all the same reasons and the sweetness. It's That's, that's just glorious. All the sweetness from the corn here and then the sherry barrel. Exactly. Hello, Benjamin. The the Isla barrels add just this little kind of wisp of smoke. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, it's good. Mm. You got a massive headache. Mm. Yeah, it's no fun. Um, I do have regular Joseph Magnus. My real question is. Not 100% sure where it is. I'm pretty sure it's in the office. Not sure what box. Mine's and back that would be too there long behind, the, uh, behind the uh, Blanton's there. It's, mm. I could probably I could get it out, but it'd be a lot of moving things. Yeah, we may, maybe later. I just, yeah, I don't know. That's a lot of moving things, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm not so lazy. Opposed, not opposed to find it. Move I things. Just, I just don't know where it is. I, I mean, there's, there's seriously, there's. I'd have to go through like 40 boxes, and I don't think anyone wants to sit here and wait 
20 minutes while I look through boxes. That seems like a bad plan. I got whiskey I can drink. I'm okay with you. Ah, the Cobalt Four Grain is delicious. Mm. That'd be pretty fun with this, too. I, I'm still, yeah, we got that from last mm. week. Or the hell week it was. All right, I'm going to try this little piece of bacon that's been soaking. Ah, okay. If I can get this cat out of my lap. Yeah, that's good luck with that one. What do we soak this in? Oh, the peanut butter. Peanut butter. You know, I can pull out the Murray Hill. That I know where the Murray Hill is. How about that? I can do Murray Hill. That I can grab. Because I know exactly where Murray Hill is. Same family. I just, I just don't know legitimately where Magnus is at the moment. This is a bottle. I just don't know where the hell it is. It's pretty good. And then, Can't pretend that's not pretty good. That's I don't pretty know good. the Magnus is not opened either. I don't even know what batch it is. I just know it was really good. I tried it at uh, Total Wine like two years ago. It was good. Yep. I think that's when Sarah tried it too. <sighs> What's going on? Oh, we were at Lewis. Was with, I was with Pete. That's when I got it. Yeah, we went to a tasting there for uh, the cigar blend with for uh, Glen Moranji, and it was yeah, it's a bigger one. Yeah, so this is the Murray Hill Club on the top, and it, it comes in at 103 proof. But yeah, so this is Murray Hill Club. So let's see how that is. Ah, ah, Scott Turner. I do know who Kelly Sparks is. Sure. Uh, Kelly Sparks, Redbeard. Yeah, I know he's got a whiskey channel out there, too. He's he's entertaining. I know I've watched a few of his episodes. Sure, check out Kelly Sparks. Sarah handed me a Joe Mag Cigar Blend. Oh, the one from Cliff. Yeah. That's a good idea. Oh, I've got a dig. It's, it's wonderful. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Yummy. Okay. I'll go grab I I do know where the sample from Cliff is. I'll go find it. I'll be right back. I gotta go downstairs though. So you have to talk to them while I go do that. Okay. I'll keep them entertained. So we got uh, a sample bottle of the Joe Mag uh, Cigar Blend. This is batch number eight of the Cigar Blend coming in at 112.82 proof. And it's big and it's bold and it's lovely. Robot Scott says, I'm shocked to see how skinny Bacon Cat is for how much bacon he eats. It's, he also runs very fast <laughs> and plays a lot. We have a five-year-old. That's his cat. Uh, him and the five-year-old play together like a cat and a dog, like a like a dog and a kid would. It's very hilarious. The cat is on keto. <laughs> it sounds right. Meat only in this house. Hmm. Mm. Sorry, I'm still over here on the nose. This thing is so glorious. Mm. Yeah, that works very, very well with the with the cigar blend. Okay, I found it. So Cliff Smith, he's a awesome guy up from Connecticut. Mm. He's also whiskey sommelier. Um, God, we're taking level two with us. Super cool dude. I I call him the uh, the whiskey fairy because he comes to visit me. He always brings me new whiskeys that are like unicorns for me and I can't find. So he's the whiskey fairy. He brings awesome donations. Like some of the stuff like imperial crap that you can't even get the bulldoze distilleries. So yay Cliff. Exactly yay Cliff. So let's see how this is. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's quite good. I have no doubt. It yeah, is absolutely a tobacco note that comes out once you mix it with the umami. 
I don't know what you missed it with the bacon. Hey, YW, how's it going? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. Ah, uh, ha, ha. Yeah. Ben will be in Austin at the end of May for Psalm 2. Mm -hmm. Our class is scheduled for the end of May. Yeah, it's the we'll be there starting Memorial Day through that week. Um, oh, the reason this says it's a, it's not really hat backwards, it's Ta, which is short for Ta and Kara, which is the grapevine distillery that we're good friends with. The guys down there, and I have multiple shirts from them. So it's a backwards hat. It's really cool because if you buy a bottle of whiskey that you can't buy any whiskey there, but if you buy an expensive T-shirt, they give you a free bottle of whiskey. Go so, and tour. Well, I have three. Which is good. Stuff. I just got to buy a nice t-shirt. Exactly. And they threw in a Glen Karen and a Koozie too, so it's a really good deal, and it's good whiskey. Mmm. Yep. Yeah. Like that a lot. Mmm. Good stuff. So far, cigar blend for the win. Very, very good. Yeah. Although, it, in a surprising turn of events, the screwball in a close second. All right, let's see how the screwball is. Mm. Oh, I just took the piece of bacon out and ate the bacon. Mm. That's delicious. Right? It actually works really well. Oh, not the super meaty and sweet now, but they're soaking. Mm. That's awesome. Yep. It was a, it, it, it worked. You could totally pour that like on a sandwich and soak it in there. It'd be amazing. Mm, I really like that. Oh yeah, you're right now. You're right. The Knob Creek store picks they had the last the last few I've tried have been freaking awesome. I will definitely say that. Yes, All right. definitely need to make a trip up here to buy some t-shirts for sure. They will greatly appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Let's yep. move on to some single malts, shall we? How about that one that we're borrowing from Pete? The uh the Rua. Okay. Start with that one. So I don't know if Pete's in the chat or not, but we're borrowing your Rua tonight because we want to see what it was like, Pete. This is an American single malt. This is an American single malt from you gave uh, me a little uh, sniff out of the bottle and it smells like a space side. Yeah, from Charlotte, North Carolina, comes in at 92 proof, only 17 months old. I am shocked by how good this whiskey is. I was shocked by how good it smelled at 17 months when you said 17 months, that's for sure. I could, because Pete didn't tell me how old it was when I tried it. I was shocked. I was like, you got to be kidding. I thought he was kidding. No. It is freaking. Oh, that's right. Because Benjamin Eves, are you? You're in North Carolina, is that right, Benjamin Eves? I think that sounds right. Mm, all right. Hey, Pat, Pat, my whiskey den. I saw that pack at over 100. I think it was at 101 last time I checked a couple days ago, or whatever. Yay! For Pat, if you guys haven't checked out my whiskey den for Pat, definitely check him out. He has a lot of cool stuff from the Midwest. But that's now that um, I guess Mike and Ben have both joined his channel, so. I guess they're starting to do North Carolina whiskeys and I can't remember Oregon whiskey, something like that. Ah, all right. You're in South Carolina. Okay. Hmm. I mean, this to me has space site written all over it. I mean, it's, it's malt forward. I get butterscotch and caramel on the nose, mm -hmm. a little bit of vanilla, but I'm not getting that super high barrel spice. What are you doing? Go put clothes on. So being um, in the American category, can I assume this is new oak, Matt? Or do we know? Um, I would imagine based right? on the color, yes. Yeah. When that, since that's – I would have to think. And it says just made with water, barley, and yeast. So I would imagine so based on the color. But it is dang tasty. Yeah, this like I knew that uh, Daniel Rex really liked this one. Oh, same on the palate. 
Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Benjamin says it's 25 gallons. Okay, 25 gallon barrels. Okay, that makes sense color wise. And it's freaking great. That's that's beautiful flavor. Like again, like if you were to hand me this as a blind, I, yeah, I don't know that I'd play American single malt. I, I think I would probably land more in the space side territory. Totally agree. But yeah, um, what was I gonna say? Um, when we're at Iron Roots fifth anniversary. Uh, Josh Galday had a bottle of this that was a cask strength sherry cask. It was unfreaking believable. Yeah. Mm. I haven't even tried it with bacon yet. I'm just kind of blown away by it. Mm. Mm. It's good stuff. Mm. <laughs> bacon cat's shadow. <laughs> well, it's only one of them. One of them's up there on the piano looking at me this direction, and one of them's in my lap. That's funny. We got them all over the place. <laughs> and the triples still would probably be very good with this. But I'd probably be more prone to try it with Striker because of the smoke. Mm. Which I do love. Which we have to review really soon. I don't know. I want to run the out. Lighter whiskeys are bringing out really fun flavor. Or the lighter no, whiskeys are being enhanced through drastically by the bacon. So point. I don't know. No, I just know that one's berry. You know what? I'll grab. I'll grab a sample of that that we got from Ty. That uh, the triple one with the cast strength sherry. Okay. I got. That's what I'll pull out because we got that, and that's readily available. That'll be much easier for me to pull out. Let's see here. Striker, rubber oak. Ah, the PX. The triple is still. Here we go. That'll work. So our beautiful yeast samples, also known as whiskey samples, but, you know, it's all good. Uh, I got the Andalusia triple. So we got the triple. Cask I'm going to go with the cherry cask. The lighter, you got it. Okay, I'm gonna go with the lighter and see kind of how how that goes. Mm. Oh, that's such a freaking awesome whiskey! Uh, it's such a freaking awesome distillery. This is true. Yeah, if you guys didn't ever get a chance to go out to Blanco and go to Andalusia, go see them. They're awesome. Hey, Trev Wilson. Good to see you. Oh, and Evap702, good to see you. It's a new name hello. we haven't seen before, so welcome. Hello, hello, welcome on in. Oh, oh that's good. Light on the nose, but hefty in the body. Mm. Mm, I like that. Mm. That's, that's okay. That was a good call. I like that a lot. Definitely a good yeah. call. And again, I remember Andalusia performing very, very well. Um, yeah, that's true too. In barbecue episodes. Oh, you definitely need to try the striker, Mark. The striker yeah. is freaking awesome. Everybody needs to try the striker. It is a very unique whiskey. Yeah, nice and smoky, not peaty, smoky. It's a beautiful, most sm different smoke to it. It's awesome. Right. Mm. The Glenfiddich Project XX, the Green Spot, and the Powers John Lane with bacon. I'm All sure we can make yummy. that happen too, Donald. All would be really yummy. Um, mm. I, okay. can, I can grab those too. I mean, we might as well. If we're going to hit triple still, we might as well hit some Irish. Okay, what do we – oh, so let's do well, – while we're thinking of Irish. So what Jameson. I pulled out tonight, this is a discontinued Jameson 12-year in the maroon case. It we were trying to think of things that we haven't – we yeah, tried exactly. We haven't tried in a long time to pair with the bacon, so um, we could do Loch Lamont 12 or 18. I have both of those. I also have to work tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> but we will try them. We'll just you guys keep reminding me throughout the stream, and we'll try to go grab some more of this stuff as we do. Yeah, this is fun. I thought this would be fun. You guys just kind of say, yell out different things you guys want us to try. and We'll do that. We'll do some kind of try and stay in some genres and go in there. 
<laughs> How does William Lou Weller cash strength pair with bacon? Um, I have a tiny amount left. I might be able to see if I get a lot, little bit out of it and let you know. I don't have a lot left of that one. I have like three fourths of an ounce left. Mm. This Jameson smells amazing. Isn't that great? Yeah, this I'd is not, continued. This is not at all a normal Jameson release. This has no, no metallic. Yeah, this is the triple distilled special reserve 12 year. Yeah, so when we get to reviewing this, we'll probably try to do this one fairly soon for you guys because, hey, Ed, the Rock I Review, one of my favorite channels to hang out and watch and be entertained by. If you guys yeah, haven't checked out Ed, the Rock I Review, definitely do so. He is hilarious. And if you haven't had a bad day, Ed is a great show to watch. You will not have a bad day anymore. You will laugh your ass off. So great. He does great. And he also knows, obviously, a ton about whiskey. Very, you know, it's, it's just done in a hilarious manner that I enjoy greatly. Mm. All right. It's a little bit more grain forward on the, uh, in the, taste. On the palate than it is on the nose. On the nose, it smells more like a single malt. Mm -hmm. um, but on the palate, the, the grain kind of comes forward, but the year, but the age is, is absolutely prominent. Um, it does not have that Jameson metallic note that I really dis mm. dislike about Jameson. So I like it. Wow. That's good with the bacon too. Mm. I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked what's doing well with the bacon tonight. It's really good. Mm. I don't know if Matt had said it already or if I said it already. I did a how to bake bacon video today. Uh, I have not put it on the computer nor have I started the editing process yet, but I have filmed a how to make bacon video. So look for that coming up in the next coming weeks, I would assume. Um, not yet, Craig F. Very soon. I will work on it. As soon as my insane busyness at the moment ends, I'm hoping within the next month to have it done. God willing. We're, we're hoping to have a Patreon launch this month uh, and to have some merch started for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We, we promise we're actually working on this stuff. I just, this is my like, ins was very busy with Christmas time and family people in town. And then this is my insane season as an accountant. So, but uh, yes, we're getting there. I promise to have it very soon. The next, I wish we could have Larceny foolproof. I know that's the new oh. thing, the new uh, every quarter or every three, you know, kind of like he's Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It's supposed to be coming out. So, yeah, I haven't seen that here yet. Uh, would love to try it. So, that would be definitely a good one. It's supposed to be 50 bucks. So, that might be a good one for you to try on the chamber if you can get a hold of it for sure. Uh, it's a high proof weeder. Uh, obviously, that's the other hard one. I mean, if you could get Weller Antique, that would be great. But I know that's really kind of hard to come by these days. But that one is. Fantastic if you can get a hold of it. Yes, I do agree, Donald. Now, I do have some old green boxes of the Jameson 18, which I've never opened and never had. Um, I just know they're superior from what everyone tells me. I have one from the UK and I have one that's from the US. So I've got a couple different ones of those at some point. So it should be quite fun uh, when we get around to opening those boxes up. Mm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. They did see the Bourbon Junkies were reviewing the new Larceny one. I saw that, I think, today, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got shirt ideas for sure, Emily. They're definitely coming. We've got, some, we've got cool ideas. We'll have, eventually, once this is all done, we'll have Glen Cairns, we'll have T-shirts, we'll have coins, all that good stuff. We do already have coasters, though, if anybody wants coasters. Um... They're downstairs. I could grab one if anybody wants to see. I have one right here, man. You got one right there? Yeah, show them the coasters. Mm. That's the one thing we do have. I know I have them somewhere here. He's got it hidden. Yeah, mine are downstairs. Um, otherwise, I can grab one if I need to go run downstairs and get it. I know I got them in here. They're hiding somewhere. That's my... Oh, Dram Bands in, in Houston? No, very cool. No, no luck. Mm. He, he's going to look. Okay, while he's looking, uh, I want to pour some of this Koval four grain. Comes in at forty-seven percent, which is distilled in Chicago. 
which yeah. is a single barrel whiskey, which is also organic. Um, Cobol is really cool. This is so the mash bowl in this one is oat, malta barley, rye, and wheat. And uh, I'm a big fan of Koval. I really, really enjoy that. Yeah, there you go. So our, our buddy Dylan, who had a baby maybe, I don't know, a few weeks ago. Congrats to Dylan. Um, he made those for us on a 3D printer, which are very, very cool. Yes, they are. So we do have a few of those left. I, a, a lot of people will gather those up, up at uh, Iron Root. So we do have a few left if anybody wants one. I think they're two, they're like five dollars for two of them. Uh, oh, um, I already knew Bobby was a cop, so I knew that a long time ago. So no big deal. Yeah, the Patreon. Uh, we've known that since the very beginning. What what a lot of you guys, I'm sure you guys probably know this. Most of us, you, we we talk a lot offline mm -hmm. with each other, pretty much on a regular basis. So yeah, we we knew he was a cop. It's not a big deal. So. It was a very entertaining show last night, though. That's for sure. He's a co-op. Bobby's an awesome guy. Mm. Oh, you reviewed it tonight? So what did you think? Uh, unfortunately, we're getting ready for our own show, Pat, from uh, My Whiskey Dome. What did you think of the Cobalt Floor Green? I really enjoy it. That's not a bad idea, Robot Scott. How many bunch of channels get together with their Glen Cairns? I'm gonna not do the most, Johnny Walker uh, rye finish. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I'll jolt your cop too. Awesome. <laughs> Mm. Oh yeah, red breast twelve is great stuff. Mm. All right, so Matt, tell me something about this Fetter Karen. All right, so we're, oh, that one's slightly peated. I don't know if you want to do that one yet. No, nope. I think we should wait. Right. Right. Let's go on do some um the lighter, not lighter. Oh, what do I want to do? Let's do the stuff from Travis. Yeah, the Cedar Ridge. Cedar Ridge. Uh, this is the single malt, which is a was finished in a chocolate cherry wood barrel, from our buddy Travis Waller, the Iowa whiskey patron saint of Iowa whiskey, as far as we're concerned. An awesome guy, probably one of, one of our certainly one of our biggest supporters. Yeah, between him and Eric. Yeah, him and Eric definitely are our two biggest supporters, and and Cliff. Definitely give us lots of awesome whiskey that we really, really appreciate it. Hey, Justin Smith, good to see you in here. Haven't seen you before, so good to see you. Welcome in, Justin. Enjoying all these new faces we're having this evening. This is awesome. Me too. I hope you guys. I'm hoping you guys probably came in from the video from the How to Find a Great Liquor Store video. Or wherever mm. you came from, welcome to the journey. Happy to have you here. Yeah, either way, we're, we're very happy you're here. I think you'll. I think you'll enjoy it and have a good time and. Hopefully, learn a lot and make a lot of new friends, and or hell, teach us a lot. We're okay with that. Yeah. We we always want to learn. We're part of being a psalm is also listening. And shut the hell up and learn what people want to hear, and see what you can taste them on that they actually like. We're pretty good at that too. Mm. All right, oh, so we're at Cedar Ridge. Is that what we're saying? Oh hell yeah! I already poured it and tasted okay. it. It's delicious. Oh, the sherry is popping out of the glass massively. Mmm. Oh. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, I don't know where Travis says he must be traveling, and I hit. I know he travels a lot. Oh, the campfire. Yeah, I get the campfire. That's that's a good call too. I'll grab that while Will says what he thinks of this. I think it's delicious. Got a little here. We got, let's see, the silver. Oh, oh here, yeah. campfire. Oh, shit. Gotta get out the yippee ki first out of the way. All right, here we go. Campfire. Oh. That brought out some spicy notes in a whiskey. 
Isn't that nice? It's good. That's really interesting. That's not what I expected at all. Really good. No. No, it amped up the black pepper ding. Mm hmm. Deep. Mm. I really like that. That was a that sh it is shocking how many of these lighter whiskeys have done really good. Mm hmm. Compared to the big old bacon. Mm mm mm. Mm. That is good. Yeah. Oh, Justin, you go did you go to the whiskey social? Yeah, we we unfortunately do not go. Small children, and you can only travel so many times a year. So many times parents are willing to watch your children. So I basically reserve one set of parents for uh for a song Psalm for another one for the bastards ball. That's so right. that, that that's pretty much my limit as far as they're concerned. So they might watch them one night here and there so I can do a whiskey event, but that's about it. Say, hey, I'm damn happy to go to Austin anytime to have a Daniel Rex, so works just fine with me. All right, so High West Campfire. This is an awesome whiskey. So this comes out of Utah, which is a blend of bourbon and uh, rye and malt blended malt scotch. So this is really cool. So this is peated. Uh, if you guys didn't have it, the best way to describe this is a World War II museum, as my brother likes to say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you go into a World War II museum, that's exactly what this smells like on the nose. That old, dusty, just old stuff. It smells awesome. Oh, oh, ah, yeah. You're back. Oh, I do love this whiskey. Don't knock over my bottles. That cat, that's how you die, cat. Especially that one right there in front. I had the one that broke the thing last week. Yeah. Or two weeks ago. Yeah. Bad pussy cat. <laughs> hey, Joseph Bryce, how's it going? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Balconis has been calling my name for a while now. That's really nice with the campfire. The peach doesn't want to stick out that much, the bacon. No. Um, it's That's not what I was hoping for. So... Not so much on that one. Good whiskey. Doesn't really do anything as far as accentuating the... Uh... All right, so we got a bunch of Alconas here. So let's see here. Which one do you want to do first? We got out the single malt cast strength. We got out the Froak. We got the regular bourbon. We've got the Brimstone. And we got the Juntos. I say we go for the cast strength. Regular cast strength single malt. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so this is a cast strength single malt. Finish. This is a European oak cask. This is a goody goody pick. 25 months old from 2018. So I really, really love this whiskey. Um, in fact, mm -hmm. I, myself, I like it so much that I've been through like three bottles of it. So, needless to say, I found it again the other day in the place that I hit it at. And I was very excited. Let's see. Oh, I do love that whiskey. So let's see how it is with the bacon. Mm. God, I love that whiskey. Mm. Oh. That made it really the meaty char. Really brought the char out of the bacon. Did it? On its own, I'm I'm surprised this is a single barrel cask strength because this smells and feels like on the palate like much lower than 63%. That's why it will hurt you. I can smell the 63%, right? Like the ethanol vapors are absolutely there, but... Man, on the palate, this tastes like a 50% freaking beverage. This tastes like an Andalusia, right? Like it's got the, the thick viscous. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any of the heat. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, a lot more barrel char comes through. Uh huh. There's 
I can taste like this this astringent. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. It's not at all what I was expecting. No, very good. Like I said, it brings a lot of the char in for sure. It does. It's good. I like this better without bacon. This is the first whiskey tonight that gets that I don't feel like got improved by bacon. Okay. Alright, we'll go to some of their it's relatives. Let's see, froke or hutos first. Or the regular red label bourbon. I say we stick with the single belts for a minute. So let's do the froke first. Okay. Let's see what we think. Because you know, the froke is awesome. Yeah. All right, so what Froke is, this is a French oak at 61.9 Balconos. That's Froke. It is from, this is a distillery one. It's 36 months old, but you, this you can find on the shelf. I'm going to limit the allocation. Peanut butter bacon again. I've just been taking bites out and then putting it back in. Oh, and the bacon and the peanut butter? Yeah. It's hysterical. Uh, Still really good. Still unexpected, but really, really good. Oh. Yeah. That's I'm not a fan of that on its own. I am a fan of that. <laughs> oh. Woo. Do love that. Ooh. That's great. So in wine barrels, French oak usually gives me um, more of a coconut influence rather than um, a caramel influence. It's a little bit lighter. It's a little bit more toasty. Mm -hmm. And I'm absolutely getting that in this in comparison to the last one we just tried. This has more of a toasted coconut, like a coconut cream pie almost vibe to it. Well, Joseph... We had to come up with something because Teeling canceled. This seemed like a good idea. And you know what? It it's was. It's a in episode, but we're okay with it if you are. Yeah, I'm not complaining. I thoroughly enjoy this. It was going to happen at some point anyway, so it just happened earlier than we expected. Mm. <sighs> All right, so let's see here. Mm. Oh, now see, that's much better with the French oak. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. That's insane. So the, the, the palate journey is completely different on two different Balconis. Same basic proofs, same single malt, Ooh. barrels. Um, There's my wow. buddy Matt. Uh, pairing. My buddy, my old buddy from Goody Goody, who's in Michigan now. It's good to see you. That Hope Matt doing well up there in Michigan. He's one of my one of my best buds there over at Goody Goody. Always loved hanging out with him, love him having come over and taste some great whiskeys with him. He was always an awesome dude. He, wanted, he knew a ton about whiskey and we could talk about it for hours. Always a good guy. So oh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully you're doing well up there in Michigan and got some cool new job up there. I'm hoping. Hopefully you're working for any. You were trying to look for a brewery or something. All right, so this is the Junto side pit for at fifty six point one. Also a distillery release. Mmm, going to be delicious. Oh, I'm excited about this. So I think this should be interesting. Oh, thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. Oh, I do love this whiskey so much. The Juntos, so good. So this is finished in tequila barrels, and uh, it's it smells awesome. It really smells good. Yeah. So I'm really interested to see how this goes. That's a good whiskey. Oh, tequila and bacon would be a fun episode to film too. Okay, that's awesome. Best All sweet yeah. with the tequila barrel rings off. Hey, Dustin, how's it going? I'm going to ruin my palate for the rest of the evening, but I'm going to go brimstone. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I don't care. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to switch to so here. so good with the Juntos. All of them. They're sweet, 
savory notes stand out with it. That's awesome. It's like smelling a campfire. Looking charcoal in a good way. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Mm. You know what? I got got to pull out one tequila just because they're they're saying it. Hmm. So this is, let's see here. This is the Casa Noble Hoven, which is a single barrel. This is 102 proof tequila, which you basically, is the only tequila I have that's not 80. I'm going to open this up because I've been waiting for a time to do this. Damn, that was a good pop. Damn, that's got that's got a nice cork, as Rex would say. That you can kill a dog with that thing. Oh. Okay, so unexpected turn of events. Uh, that was amazing. The balconis. Yeah. The, uh, the brimstone. Yeah. Gets even sweeter when you add in the meat. Really. Like sweetness dialed up to eleven. Tequila smells wonderful. Mm. Oh, oh, it's all sweet. Oh, that's very nice. And see, that's all I got out of the brimstone too. It's just really, really sweet, especially in comparison or compared <sighs> to the bacon. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's really good with tequila. So maybe another day we'll do a whole episode on that with tequilas and uh, bacon or something. Probably as a video, not so much as a stream. Well, I feel like we should probably do just a tequila episode in general. You know, what's the yeah. difference between the three major categories and sure. stuff like that, just to, to give people some of that background of it. We can totally do that. Works for me. There's a lot of spirit categories I'd like to do uh-huh. just to kind of help people be better educated yeah. when they go to the store. Absolutely. There's a uh-huh. lot of stuff we've learned in this journey. Absolutely. And I, thankfully, I have one of the very best teachers there is on tequila and stuff. That's uh, Liquor Hound. Mm-hmm. He's freaking amazing. Yeah. If you guys haven't ever watched Liquor Hound, check his videos out. He's awesome. He's not what you would call a whiskey tuber. But at the same time, yeah, he kind of is, isn't he? Oh, he's a whiskey tuber. He he's an all spirits tuber. Yeah, but yeah, he does lots and lots of whiskey. His whiskey collection, guys, is insane. What he has, what I have in newer stuff, he certainly has in older stuff. I mean, everything I can think of as far as like amazing old whiskeys you always want to try, it all lives there. It is a beautiful, wonderful place to go. It's heaven. It's quite great. I'd say if I have. Access to the three greatest collections in the state of Texas. So right. it's a hell of a time. It's a good time to be alive. Yeah. Hey, Graham Young. Good to see you. And Graham. Yeah. I think it says whiskey. Crusaders like tequila content. Hey, Jesus Brazos. We are equal opportunity of all types of uh, alcohol. Hey, yeah. I, had beer, I had a beer the other night that was great. One alcohol, please. Yes, exactly. Where, yeah, because Eric uh, on the stream the other night tried that. Was it Spotted Cow? That shit was good. It was really good from Wisconsin. Oh. It makes me excited about my trip to uh, Wisconsin later this year. I'm very excited about that. All right, I'm going to go Westlands Gariana. Okay, so I, I put the little brimstone in here ah. just real quick. Fair enough. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 Kitty. You've been good. You're right. It sweetens up a lot. It sweetens up crazy amounts. I know poor Will didn't get any of the spotted of the spotted cow. It's fun. We'll get him one. Will gets plenty of whiskey. This is true. What's up in Wisconsin? 
We're going to Door County to hang out. My wife found it on a random, I don't know, travel site. That's what my wife does. We always go to random. That's how we went up in Traverse City last year. Was my wife just looking for random stuff, and of course we always look for places where distilleries are because you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go on vacation and not go to distilleries and breweries and wineries because that's what we do on vacation. Um, we went to two we went to two distillers last year. Traverse City, which actually is gonna be here next week. Traverse City, their uh, founder and owner uh, will be here with us, and that's gonna be awesome. Uh, so next week will be Traverse City. And also went to Grand Traverse, who will have hopefully either March or April will have their owner on. So, so that should be a blast too. Totally different whiskeys, both really good though. Um, and then the year before that, we went to Bryson City, which is in uh, North Carolina. And we on the way there, we drove through uh, Gatlingburg and went to Old Smoky, which I know the rep really well in Texas for Old Smoky. And so we got to hang out with Johnny Baker, which is one of their owners, and we got to try all sorts of amazing, cool stuff from. Uh, from Old Smoky. I love and I love moonshine, guys. I mean, we're gonna have a moonshine night. I have 30 something different moonshines from Old Smoky. It's gonna be an awesome night. So we've actually had uh Bo, who's the local rep here. We did an event with them, and that rep that awesome was an awesome night. <laughs> I think he must have I think the next day I must have got I got several like people must have bought at least 50 bottles of moonshine the next day after that event. He sold a lot of freaking moonshine that night. It was awesome. Oh, we'll do we'll do wine and bacon. I love wine. It's all good. I belong to three wineries. It's all good as a member. I love wine. I I drink about as much wine as I drink whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Every I'll, day I have people come to my restaurant and with bottles of wine that want me to taste their wine for them. So it's yeah, uh, it's fun times for me. All right. So what are we moving to? I don't remember. Um, oh, Gariana, you said, yeah, Westland's Gariana. Okay. Right this is really cool. So, this okay, so Gariana is a type of oak found up in the northwest, and Westland uh was lucky enough to find some dead trees of Gariana and, and they air dry them for three to five years usually, and they're able to use it. So, mm -hmm. this is the fourth in the series. I actually have one of the lucky people to have all four in the series, which they're not allowed to cut down those trees, yeah, exactly. You can only you get them to find the dead one. So, which is cool, but they happen to also find coming upon a lumber yard that had tons of Gariana for whatever reason sitting there that nobody wanted. Interesting. And there's actually a cool video on YouTube if you go and look for uh, Westland, and it's probably about 20 minutes. It's really cool with the history of Westland. You guys should definitely check that out. But yeah, I have all of them. I love it. One seven here. I think it's worth it. I think that I paid like 150 for them. They're totally worth it. They're some of the best. Uh, American single malt there is. So this is the four. This one is 100% malted barley. It's three years old, but the cool part is it's also 100 proof, non show filtered, no coloring, very very limited release. Let me tell you what's in it as far as what the casks were. All right, so the cask they combined to make this is 29% first fill X rye, 29% first fill X bourbon. 19% New Gariana Oak, 16% Pedro Jimenez Hogshead, and 7% Refill Gariana Oak. So it's a very complex. With, so we've actually had the pleasure of having Westland here. Uh, we had them here back in August. Unfortunately, it was also the day that the <laughs> that uh, Google Hangouts disappeared and StreamYard started, which we didn't know. Nobody knew about StreamYard yet at that time. And so it got all jacked, but that's life. We had an awesome dinner with them. We got to try all the Garianas. We tried uh, the Reverie, which is unbelievable. We tried two different uh, heat weeks. All I'm the gonna, standard. I'm going to talk awesome. real quick just to kind of uh, go over a little bit of that oak that we were talking about. Oh, okay. said first fill. We're talking about um, Scottish definitions of first fill, which is really the first fill since the first fill. So really right. the second fill, even though we say first fill. Um, so I just wanted to kind of clarify that for anybody in the chat that may not know. First mm -hmm. fill really means second fill. And refill really means third fill. Mm. Oh, that's good. Uh, Booker's did very well, Joseph. Mm -hmm. That's glorious. That's really good. All the sweetness and the meatiness at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Oh, wow. Yeah, I opened this up the other night. 
for the whiskey challenge. So, oh wow, damn good. That's really good for the bacon. Mm. That's great. But yeah, so mm. yeah, we had a nice, really nice dinner with them. Catered night. It was awesome. About twenty five of us here. Fantastic evening. But their uh, their ambassador flew in from uh, Washington for us, and it was really really cool night. Yeah, yeah. Our bus, our buddy uh, Justin Riggs set that up for us. Who is a works for um, he <clears throat> for Remy Quantro, and uh, awesome dude. I guess he got promoted. Now he's up in Colorado, but he still helps us out, and he's a super cool dude. Oh, a knock twenty two. A knock twenty two is fucking awesome. Um, I can get a knock 22 if you want. Um, it's damn good stuff. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Mm. And user. Yes. <laughs> mm. oh, that's my winner so far. That's freaking delicious. Once again, Westland hits it out of the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Gary Honest since the first time I had the 2.0. I lucked out. My buddy Logan, uh, he was we call him the whiskey runner. He goes all over the state. Hell, he goes all over the damn country and the world, and he brings back whiskey for us. Right. Awesome guy. He actually, He's responsible for a couple other whiskeys up here tonight, too. But he got me the uh, the, the one he found on a crappy little liquor store in Waco. He found me the one uh, maybe a year or two ago, maybe two years ago. One or two years, I can't remember, but yeah, we cracked that puppy as soon as he found it as a thank you. And that stuff was really good. So, yeah, as like, I mean, we paid retail for it, which was good because I think they said the secondary, I think it's like a thousand dollars. Yeah. Because like, they made very few bottles of it and it's very good. Ooh, Andalusia Striker and Blueberries. That sounds tasty. I would like that. Ooh, shit, you've been a knock 24 gram? That's awesome. That is that is one of my unicorn whiskeys. I really want to try the knock 24. That's awesome you have one of those. The 22 is amazing, but I heard the 24 is mind-blowing. I've not had that one. All right, so let's see what else we got here. So far, a big winner. All right, let's go. Try the ball blare? Yeah, let's do the ball blare. Okay, so this, courtesy of my buddy, I don't know if he's still in the chat, Ben Stahl. Was got this up in New Jersey for me. This is the Ball Blair 1990 25 year. Oh, and this thing is beautiful. This is non color, you know, natural color, non show filter, second release. Oh, and this thing, plus this thing opens up amazing. Look at this shit. Is that not sexy as shit? So this thing opens up, comes out of here. It's a good looking box. I mean, Look at the color on this shit, guys. That is freaking beautiful. We're pretty sure non -shell, non non colored. Yeah, it's what it says on the box. Non shell filter, non color. Okay, good. So checks all the boxes. Yeah, and it is at what's the proof? I think 46 percent. Yeah, it's just from twenty sixteen. So. <sighs> Good God, man. Yeah, all I can say is thank you, Ben Stahl, for finding this amazing whiskey for me. Yeah, I actually opened this up on the one-year um, live stream with uh, Cash Crank. We were on the stream with them. Oh, my gosh. That smells so good. You get an 83? Hey, Dustin, how much do they want for the 83? Just to wonder. I know those are not cheap. Okay, that smells just glorious. I can't even, I can't, even, I take a sip here. Mm. Oh. 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 So oh. freaking good. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Five to six hundred. Yeah, yeah, probably worth it. Wow. I see what you buy, Dustin. I think it's a buy for you. Oh. Oh, 
dough that's amazing with the bacon. So good. Hmm. I just drank my mixed glass on accident, damn it. Oops. That was not very amazing with the bacon. Okay, does bacon in my mouth. I whatever. Have my you know what? Have Mike buy it. Problem solved. I am drinking the same thing. I'm drinking the bubbler. The nineteen ninety. That is a glorious whiskey. And that is really good. Really sweetens the sh sweetens that nice sweet meaty. Mm. Bacon. That's really good. Mmm. Yep. And again, it dials mm. up to umami. The bacon night when it's coming in. Mm-hmm. Makes it very nice and meaty. And the bacon tastes more meaty. It kind of dials both things up. It accentuates both. Absolutely. That's really good. That was a good call. Yeah, Sarah's going to love the hell out of that one. Oh, I figured that. Yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. That is, that's great. So once again, thank you, Ben Stahl. Appreciate you getting to that. You the man. Mm. All right. So I think after that, um, let's go to the Lucky Cat. All right. I so, saw you post this on. Uh, so this was another Whiskey Challenger. I like the bottle. Of course, this, I like cats. This bottle is awesome. Okay, so this comes from the Mars Company. This Lucky. is this is the Lucky Cat, 40%. So every year, there's a new Barrel House Cat. This cat name is May, and they, so what did they do with the old barrel house cat. Well, they just they it's just they pick a different cat. They have like they have hundreds of these. They have several cats in there, and oh, every year that, the owner picks his favorite cat for the year. And I guess May must have done a really good job and not killing the mice or whatever. Um, so this comes in at forty percent, but it is a beautiful coloring on this thing. I mean, that's that's nice. It's a cool cat there. Um, who makes this? Mars makes this. This is out of Japan. Oh, okay. Ah, Dragon Ben Make You Man. You have a May. Ooh. Ooh. So this, I was shocked when I, when I opened this up. I figured, you know, I've had some other Mars products, which I enjoy. This thing beats them all. Do cats piss on barrels? Probably so. Maybe it makes the barrels better. I don't know. But every distillery I've ever been to has a cat. So, I don't know. Hopefully, they don't be on the barrels, but I'm sure it's, it's I'm sure it's happened at some point. It adds body, as Jason Coates says. There are quite a few wines out there that smell like cat pee. So, oh, super. Sauvignon Blanc and uh, Albarino are both known to smell of ammonia. It's pretty funny. Putting a uh, putting those in front of somebody blind and then saying that word and watching their face go, oh. <laughs> mm. Oh. Hmm. This smells really good. Um, this smells like a combination of both grain and malt. This does not smell like a single malt. Right. Uh, this smells like a blended. Scotch, it is. It right? is a blended. Okay. I was going to say, it doesn't smell like a, like a single. It smells like a blended. But it doesn't smell bad. It's not off-putting. <laughs> your, your down jacket reeks of, pee, of cat pee. That's not a good thing. Hmm. It really brings the pepper note up a lot, which I was, which is shocking. On its own, it's just kind of flat, kind of dull. Um, there's not a lot going on, but at the same time, it's not. It's not like again. It's not off-putting by any means. Yeah, this is one to better have at a fresh, early in the night palette because it's forty percent. Yeah, when I open this up on the fresh palette the other night, the stuff is really good. There's probably a lot happening that my yeah, the raisins and dates and right plums and um, <clears throat> it's quite tasty. I can I can understand that. 
a lot of things that my palate's going to have. Oh, yeah, we've had, we've, had a lot of, we've had a lot of whiskeys. Let's see. This is my used pile. Are you ready? Yeah, I've gone through have. many, many whiskeys at this point, so. Oh, and I pulled one out of there, so. Yeah, add one to that. If beer smells like cat pets, typically the yeast is due to wild yeast. Hop should not do that unless someone is really trying to do that weird flavor on purpose. Good to know. Some grapes just do that anyway. Valid point. All right, what else do we want to do? So we did all those. Yeah. Ah, I think I think it's time to go to some uh, more scotch. <laughs> Let's see. I got three left here, Matt. Okay, that's what and I. That honestly sounds about right for me. I'm getting yeah. kind of exhausted. My palate's fatiguing. Yeah, I think that sounds good to me. All right. All right. So we'll do Federcare and Fjord first. All right. So Federcare and Fjord with the unicorn on it. How freaking cool is that freaking label, guys? So I first, so one of the first videos I ever happened to watch on the Whiskey Vault happened about Federcare and Fjord, which I'm like, what the hell is that? And it turns out to be a glorious single malt scotch. And this one is peated. Comes in at 42%. Um, this is a magical, magical whiskey. This is a very limited release. This bottle came from the from uh, the Scotland. So Logan brought this one back for me as I, as I sent him my list of things like, hey, maybe you'll get lucky and find this for me. And oh, he did. And I'm ecstatic. And I can see why Daniel likes this whiskey so much. On the nose, it's very grain forward. And it almost has a, I want to say a green funk, but it's too old to have that green funk. I'm not, hmm. There's a barnyard component to this, and I'm not sure if that's attributed to the peat. Mm, but it sure is tasty. Or the distillation process, but. <sighs> You're not wrong about that. That's really yummy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh. That's nice. That's really good with the bacon. Mm. That really accentuates the meatiness, amazingly enough. That's really nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's lovely. That's really nice. Wow. That's awesome, Grandma, all those ball blares. That's freaking amazing, dude. 83, 89, 90, 91, 98, 99, 103, 05. Damn. I think all I've got is the the 90, I want to say the 99, like a 97, and an 03. Graham, you want to come on and have a uh, ball blare night? Yeah, for real, right? That's freaking awesome. Mm. Mm. Mmm, do love long grow. Yeah, I do. Should have grabbed some long grow tonight. That'd have been good. Yeah, I'll, I can probably grab one here in a minute if need be. I'll go grab one real quick. Well, you might want to because the, the my last two are going to be big. All right, let me grab the long grow though. Again, uh, we were. I was trying to find things that I either haven't had or haven't had in a really long time for tonight's episode since. We knew the answer was going to be all of them. Um, so there really wasn't too much of a question. So far tonight, I really feel like uh, the Garyana has stood out. The Westland Garyana has stood out in massive ways that I wasn't expecting. Uh, that was mm -hmm. really. Oh, yeah. Then that Rue was real good too with it. The Rue, uh, the Iron Rue Icarus. That was awesome. That was all right. Pretty spectacular. So I grabbed 
a long grow, 16 year, 50.3%, a fresh sherry hogshead. This should be awesome. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Yeah. And then that screwball, that screwball was a real surprise. That was shocking. We threw that as kind of a joke. We really did, but it oh, yeah, let's see what the hell it kind of worked. That, yeah, like really worked. All right. I got the last little piece of bacon with the last little bit of screwball. While you do that, I'm going to do this. Oh, it smells so good. It's odd and weird, but it kind of tastes amazing. I don't get it. So good. It's a great whiskey. Mm. I don't get it. That's yummy. Mm. Oh, yeah. Eric wants to try that teachers. We could do that. You saw some teachers left from last week? Yeah, I don't know where it is, but I do. Okay, I know where the I, I, I know where the teachers. I'll grab my teachers. Nope. Let's see here. Uh, Ball Blair, nineteen ninety. It's a small. Oh, that Ball Blair's good. Give me two seconds, everybody. I'm stepping away. Will's running away. It's all good on here. So we have the teachers. Um, let's see here. The teachers Highland cream. Which is good stuff. Hey, Donner Pass Whiskey. How's it going? Hmm. All right. We'll pour a little bit of this. And I know Eric wants to do a couple other ones as well. The Lock Lamont, which I'll have to dig out here in a minute. Um, yes. We must always do that, Donner Pass. For sure. So let's see how we got the long grow with the bacon. Fantastic. I'll do a little more of that. All right. So the teachers are with it, which is from Eric Eric Evanson. Really appreciate it. This is quite good blended malt. Oh, that's nice. You can definitely, the peel, okay, so the peat accentuates big time um, with the bacon. It's nice. That's quite good. I like this teachers. That's good stuff. I think Eric should have paid like twelve dollars for it too. It's even the best part. Mm, it's good. Um, bourbon barrel aged beers. Yeah. Um, Founders, KBS, um, the hell, Goose Island. Those are probably the best ones I can think of right off the top of my head for as far as bourbon uh, aged beers. What else can I think of? Um, some of the ones you'll get that are really good you can probably get are going to be at local breweries. Um, like we've got some here at Turning Point Brewery in Bedford's got some really good stuff, finishing different uh, barrel casts. Uh, who else has some good ones I've tried? Uh, I've had some meads that have been finishing some Balcones barrels that were awesome over in uh, Grapevine at the uh, Outlaw Cider House. They, they do really good stuff. Oh, teachers is real good there, Will. It, it really accentuates the peat with the bacon. Yeah. It's nice. That's good to know. Mmm. I really like that. That's quite nice, teachers, actually. Well, and for the price point, man, like, I, I really want to have a, a cheap peat sh shootout night where you need to go blind with Peat things that are under twenty bucks. I am not opposed to this plan. If you know, see if we can't narrow down the best one. Oh, oh, it saying that that pine sap. Uh, Eric, I haven't looked for it. I'll look for it the next couple of days, and I'll let you know. Um, I, I gotta grab this other thing for Pete. I gotta get the pine barrens just because it's a pine. I gotta grab the pine barrens. Fair enough. All right. Well, I'm going to drink my last two of the night, but I don't know which order to drink them in. 
Um, Maybe that um, can help me. Oh, I think I think this is going to tell me right here, just because of the proof. Uh, so, I am trying the Lafroig, and I'm going to butcher this. Carchus. The, the Carchus, that one. Carchus. You drinking the quarter cask or the Madeira? I'm going to start with the Madeira for the proof, 51. Uh, okay. And then I'll go on to the quarter cask because the proof is 57. So we'll just – I'll bump it up that direction. Uh, Dustin, the long grow is a 16-year single cask, share, fresh uh, fill sherry. Mm. I don't know where the teachers is. Um, is Icarus, is Icarus on the shelf in Dallas? Not at the moment. It gets released in May. How many people have you told that you're a bad influence going for a little drama of Bomar 12? Oh, Bomar 12 is great. Um, I've expanded many people's palates who come over here going, I only drink bourbon. Well, we can solve that problem. <laughs> we'll solve that. We'll, we'll fix you right up. Hang on just a minute, sir. So it's like, you son of a bitch, I love scotch now. I'm like, sorry. Yeah, sorry. They still love bourbon, but they also love scotch. They're like, oh, they're like, this blows. So, I'm gonna borrow, so this is Pete's bottle as well. He got this actually on at a Long Island Spirits, which is the same place that makes Rough Rider. This is the Pine okay. Baron Alden Bond. This is going to be really interesting with the bacon because this thing, whenever we tried here when Pete was here uh, for a night with us, I guess what, in December, this thing this should be interesting. Yes, I I bring many people to exploring many whiskeys they never would without it. Irish, Scotch, Japanese, and their world changes massively. All right, I'm going to try this Pine Barrens. Oh, my gosh, that Lafroy. Oh my god! Oh. Okay, this pine barren turns to maple syrup in my mouth. That is oh. crazy. Is it because of the because of the bacon? Yeah, because of the bacon. Because on its own, it's like super pine. I mean, it's pine. It's like licking a freaking Christmas tree. Is it like young barrel pine, or is it a different type of pine? It's pine. It's supposed to be. It's a weird, funky pine invention. I'll have to give you some next time, please. This stuff is. I like it's a single malt American spirit. I like it a lot, but yeah, like I said, Pete's gonna let us review all these and don't give them back to him. Matt, does it taste like young oak? Does it taste like kiln dried wood, or does it taste? It tastes like, like a Christmas pine. tree. Okay. It's yeah, it's not like young. It's just like Christmas tree. I mean, look at the freaking color on this crap. Yeah, that's insane. It's four years old. It's freaking awesome. There have been some really amazing wines that I would have that I would say have a pine note in them. Is that dominantly pine or is that like a pine note within? This is a pine note within. This is okay. straight up pine. Interesting. In a good way. Like seriously, you smell this glass, this reminds you of Christmas. It's just smelling a Christmas tree, pine needles falling in the ground, in the forest, on the, the damp, wet or forest floor. It smells awesome. Oh, this, I just smell, it does smell awesome. Sounds awesome. I love it. Because we opened it for the first time when he was here. So it's just had probably like a month to open up. This is really good. So thanks again, Pete, for letting me borrow your whiskeys. Appreciate it. Good stuff. Uh, this Madeira cask finish smells so good. Uh, and I'm getting the wine influence in there behind all of that peat, but the peat is absolutely the forefront good. of this. Behind that, behind that rich, uh, meaty peat, and behind those medicinal notes, I'm finding these bright cherries. I could almost classify this as, uh, night, Dustin. Maybe a plum. Hey, Jason Voorhees. Mmm, this smells delicious. Oh, I, I, before I do this, because I know that'll be a palate destroyer. Uh, I gotta grab those Lock Lamonts for Eric real quick. I know he really wanted to try the Lock Lamonts. <clears throat> one of my and Lock Lamon is one of my favorite whiskeys because a Lock Lamon is cheap as hell and freaking delicious. One of, seriously, one of, one of the very best there is at being just stupid cheap and stupid good. I have no idea how the hell they keep it so cheap, 
don't care. Want them to mm. keep it that way. Just know it's really good. Oh, that's good. All right, let's see. My problem is I have several lock them on, so I have to get, get through them. So here's the 12, 12 inch Moen, the original Centennial Open, the 18. All right, so here's the regular 18 and the regular 12 you asked me about. I'll grab those. Uh, like I said, I have several lock them ons. Love lock them on. So good. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, so we gotta, gotta clear some freaking whiskey. So this is what happens on a stream. It's just like whiskey freaking everywhere, which is I not bad. words. So I have no words to describe how glorious this is. Lives in that, which I will definitely be doing soon enough. But I, oh, I Matt, you got to get on this page, man. Hurry up and drink your whiskey. I, I just got to, you know, I'm incredible. happy here. I got to do the 12 and the 18 lock them on first. That's fine. I'm going to pour more. Uh, you know what? That's a good idea. We got full, we got almost full bottles, so you're good. Uh, good Lord. So the the Mirada cask finish is I, I have not moved on to the uh the cask strength, strength quarter cask yet. Quarter cask, this, yeah, yeah. The, Mir the Mirador cask is just God, it's amazing with the bacon. All right, so let's see. All right, Matt, I wasn't listening to you. I'm not going to lie. What's so good about Loch Lomond? That the 20, the 12 year costs $35. The 18 is $75. Hell yeah. Okay. Stupid cheap and stupid good. I so, like it. As you can see. So actually the first year went down. Oh, to cool looking bottle too. I opened this up down in Austin. We, uh, I haven't really had it since we drank the hell out of it. Is the, is the, um, does the bottle have fiddly bits? Is it actually embossed or is it? Oh, it is. It's embossed in there. It's very cool. Yeah, this Does is the all Does 12 have that same bottle? Huh? Yeah. Wow. I just haven't touched bucks? it. I probably haven't on. touched it since. That's amazing. Yeah, it's been a long time since I had these two, so I'm glad Eric suggested these. I, I enjoy these greatly, so let's see here what we get. Ooh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, so good. You want to smell that? They're both stupid good. So that's the thing. Is you can get Lock them on. They're both really good and for the money. The original was twenty five dollars. The original was really good too. It's and they are no age statement one. Mmm. Oh, I feel like I bake him. Ooh. That's nice with bacon. Mm. So with bacon. Yeah, so is the Lafroig. Holy crap. Uh, that's my winner so far. Nice and sweet. It's a little smoke draws out. Those are good. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Delicious. Mm hmm. All right, let's get some water here. Mm. Hydration is important. Hydration is important. Oh, for those of you that are wondering, I don't want to give away the brand, but I'm drinking just seltzer water. I'm drinking regular water, it's just bubbles. And so it's in a can. Oh, some would say Loch Loman, but whatever. If that's what you're talking about, Ed, it's probably really Loch Loman, but Loch Lomond sounds good as a good little Texan. It sounds mm. fine. Mmm. Mmm. All right. So I think it's probably time to go on to the Lafroig. If if there's nothing else that we want to, uh... no, you know what, Matt? Just just give me those bottles. They've gone bad. They've gone bad. <laughs> you don't need to, uh, don't do that to yourself. No, I lucked out into this, especially this one. This one sat in the back of Goody Goody for two years. Get it? This is the 16 version. Oh wow! They're like, yeah, nobody wants this. Do you want this one? 
yes, yes, I do. Oh, you don't think ever? Hey, whiskey dick, how's it going? How you doing? I hope you're feeling better, Bill, because I know I talked to you yesterday. You weren't feeling so great. So hopefully you're, hopefully you're doing better. Hopefully your family's better. It's nice that they weren't doing so great. They were sick. So a wild dick up here. I hope they're all good. Thank you for coming in, Bill. We appreciate it. Oh, the glass even smells glorious. I understand the writing completely. I have to do that the rest of this week. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm. It smells amazing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It is amazing. Oh my god. I forgot how freaking amazing this whiskey was. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Mirida is um pretty much the perfect um, thing to cook with because of its high alcohol content and the fact that it's basically pasteurized by oh, being heated, cool. and heated and cooled. You can open up a bottle of Mirda and leave it sitting on your counter for months and it won't change in flavor. So it makes for an amazing cooking whiskey. Um, or not whiskey, I'm sorry, cooking wow. wine. It's because our forefathers actually drank it because it could survive the trip from England right. across the Atlantic. So when they signed the Declaration of Independence, they were drinking Madeira. Mm -hmm. That's what they're talking about when they say they drink wine. Oh, oh yep, my yep. gosh! And it's so and good. It's amazing with the bacon. Holy crap! Yep. Wow. Okay. That's my winner now. I thought that was gonna be the Gariana. The sweetness of this Madeira and the peat. Damn, is that good? And the sweetness gets dialed up. Uh, All right. I got like for you. Add it with the bacon. Shh. Come on, you can make it. We only have one more whiskey to go. No, no. Okay, okay go, go. You can be quiet for just a little bit longer. It's only one more whiskey. Then I'll sign off, and you can be as loud as you want to be. All right. Sorry. I have uh, the... Great. Put those down. I have the quarter cask now. All right. So we get the quarter cask. Cast strength. Oh, yeah. The proof on the... Ooh, and this does not smell as sweet. The first one was 51.6. This one is 57.2. Right. So... And this does not smell <laughs> anything you know, close to as sweet. There's no... This is probably the first time these have been poured since they were opened. Was when I gave you an ounce of each of these. These, uh, who this is, this is basically just peat. This is medicinal. This has a little bit of sweetness coming from a, like a vanilla caramel kind of place, but man, it is buried behind the oak or buried behind the peat. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes, the peat and bacon uh, experiment is very, very fun, Donald. I highly recommend it. Mm. Good. Mm. The Madeira, I think, is better because the sweetness it adds to it. Yeah, this one, the um, medicinal note turns up. Mm. I get more of an iodine. More mm -hmm. of a, kind of that, that burnt band-aid on the palate with the bacon on this one. Mm. It's still good. It's not nearly as good as the, the Mirada. Agree. Yeah, the Madeira, oh, that makes it just it's the perfect amount of peat and perfect oh. sweetness. It's just it's the perfect bacon whiskey. Yeah, that's just, I think that's hands down the winner. I, I think so too, Matt. Like the. And that, just, that hits all the sweetness I liked in that I found in Icarus and a little bit, and then all the another nice different roundness of the Gariana. It, mm -hmm. it brings it all together and just, it's just a beautiful, it's just a beautiful mash. You know yeah. what? I want to pour a little more. I am too. The, the Madeira was my favorite. I'm going to toast out on that. Yeah. Um, and. 
I, I actually agree with you. I think the Gariana is going to be in second place after that. Yeah. Um, and then followed by some of the bourbons, uh, the Joseph Magnus, the Iron Root Icarus, uh, were both really, really spectacular. And Screwball. Uh, Screwball was good. I can't. I wish it wasn't, but it was. And I, it really was. It's, I don't. It's I don't want to say that out loud because I'm a psalm, and I don't feel like I'm allowed to say that out loud. But it was. It was good. It was good. And honestly, if you like peanut butter, Screwball really like that's. That's kind of your jam. That's kind of fun. It's it's good. It, it's 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 alcoholic peanut butter. It's it's pretty fun. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I can't pretend it's not fun. No, absolutely. Mm, Filipino mm. barbecue. That sounds delicious. That's my favorite. I don't know when it makes that, but if we can convince Brian somehow to make Filipino barbecue, that sounds delicious. I'd be all for that. I do love food pairings and whiskey. That is one of my favorites. Speaking of food pairings, right on Sunday, guys, we're going to film a coffee and whiskey. So find out what the best whiskey in your coffee is. So my buddy, Dan Burgess, he is a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he owns a coffee company. He is also a West Point graduate, a veteran uh, of our lovely wars. And he was a he also was my financial advisor, but he also owns a coffee company and makes some awesome coffee. And we're going to be having him here on Sunday, filming an episode with him about what the best whiskey with your coffee. A bunch of his different coffees, which won a bunch of awards and stuff. Really, really good coffee and really good whiskey. So it should be a lot of fun when we do that on Sunday. So I'm excited. So I asked Stephanie, which is my wife, if she joins us. No, but I'm sure the hell I'm going to drink the hell out of that coffee and whiskey, but I'm not being your damn episode. <laughs> maybe I can convince her. I thought it was pretty funny. She's like, oh, I'm up I for doubt that. it, but maybe I can convince her. It'd be fun to have Steph in. Yeah, on Sunday, Emily, we're going to we're gonna shoot that episode. That'll just be a regular video. That won't be a live stream. Um, but yeah, it'll be coffee and whiskey. Um but yeah, it's it's really cool stuff. Um, yeah, we'll it should be fun. Get, we'll probably get like three or four coffees from him, and probably choose probably five whiskeys that we're gonna put with yeah with coffee. each one and see how it goes. Exactly. Let me see, let me tell you the name of his uh, coffee company. Hold on one sec. Like full cupping. Yeah, exactly. Let's see here. Here we go. His coffee company is called. Let's see here. It's uh, BrassBulletCoffee.com. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, that's the coffee we're going to be doing is a bunch of his different coffees on Sunday. But uh, he makes really, really good coffee. And he sources it from around the world, and it's really good stuff. So, Good night, Arthur. Good night, Arthur. We're actually going to be signing off as well. Yeah, we're going to be – yeah, we got four minutes and we're done. Yep. So we've well, had some really good amount of whiskey – do some definitely drink some water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four, five. I had twenty-one. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Uh, like thirty-two. So I think we're good. I'm good on samples. So you know, I think thirty-two is. Probably pretty close to our record for a night. Um, yeah, 30 is good. It was a fun night. I enjoyed this. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I think Eric, that's the that's conclusion. So some conclusions I would certainly draw from this evening is really sweet works really well with bacon. It does. Um, also really, really peaty, really works peaty really well. at the same time works amazing. Yep. You Sorry. either want to compare or contrast, right? You either want your flavors to be kind of similar. You want sweet with sweet or you want... That's spicy with the sweet. Yeah. So Eric's asking what episodes we got coming out. Right. So coming out tomorrow will be actually in a donation from Eric Erickson. Eric Evanson, sorry. The is the yeah, I screwed it up multiple times this one. I gotta write the video though, so it's all good. Is the Crown Royal Black, which is actually quite a good whiskey. Yes, it is. Um let's come out tomorrow. And then on Thursday is Eagle Rare 17 year. 
which is a BTAC, which is very exciting and very good whiskey. So that's what's coming out this week. Plus, and we don't know what's coming out next week because we haven't filmed those yet. Yeah, I don't know yet exactly. I don't know what's coming. Well, I have an we idea. Film what's on coming. Sunday, and I'll have some videos ready for you. Hopefully by Tuesday. Exactly. <laughs> also, Wednesday night, guys. After Jason the Mash and Drum, we're gonna do our we are one year anniversary. February was the day our first video hit YouTube. Yep. Um, very excited to hang out that night. We're gonna have several other whiskey tubers join us. Uh, Jason the Mash and Drum. Hopefully, Whiskey Dick, as long as he's feeling good, will be there. Uh, hopefully, Scott from Scotch's Dummies. We should Jason be having uh, Chris Bourbon Insane. We should have Sam from Ice Tissue Wines. Should be a fun night. Should be us all hanging out, having a blast. Just, just, and that's just going to be a hangout night, guys. It's going to be kind of a uh, whatever you guys, uh, what time? The time should be approximately between 10, 10 30 p.m. Eastern, 9, 9 30 Central. Just whenever Jason's done after his show, we don't want to cut into his time. So as soon as Jason's done over on the Mash and Drum, he's going to join us and we're going to hang out. And it should be, it should be a fun night for sure. So we should have a really good time with some other channels. Um, yeah, and then maybe throughout the night we may have some other guests as well. Uh, it just depends on you know timing, how long we're on for, and who else wants to join. Because obviously the one disadvantage of Hank is streaming artists only have six, so we can have four other guests besides ourselves. Plus, you know, and, we, and some of them may come out and what had other people, whatever. So, but it should be a really fun night, and we're just gonna be drinking just whatever. So you guys, it'll be kind of an ask anything, try anything kind of whiskey night. So it should be a really good fun time. Yeah, so it's been a year, so it's been pretty crazy. Um, it's been a hell of a year. It's been a really a fun, fun year, guys. We, yes. you know, we've been really excited. We've been blessed to have this channel. It seems to be successful and uh, learned a lot. Learned, yeah, learned a lot. Met a lot of awesome friggin' people. Yes, we have. So yeah, it's it's been a hell of a year. So, um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think uh, hopefully we'll see everybody on Wednesday night. Um, so over check out the review tomorrow. If you guys haven't seen our how to how to pick a great liquor store from uh, yesterday, definitely watch that show. It's a freaking awesome episode. It is a good interview with some good people. Yeah, and if you are in the area and get a chance to go to Mirage in Colleyville, Texas, do check it out. Uh, and there's a lot of people suggest that we do a go around the store and film the whiskeys. Um, I think we can definitely make that happen for everybody. Yeah, um, we'll we'll. William will probably William and Hino will probably let us do that. So yeah, I have no doubt. They would love to have more customers in the store. No yeah. doubt about it. So all right, everybody. We will see you guys all here hopefully on Wednesday night. And thanks for joining us for whiskey and bacon. This was a lot of fun. Alex, this is a last minute thing. So we blast next week will be Traverse City. We'll be here with their hey. founder and owner. So it should be it's gonna be a blast. So yeah, it is. And the week after that will be it's Ooh. bourbon night will be here. So it's gonna be awesome. So thanks everybody for joining us. I want to say cheers, everyone. Thanks for joining this evening, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday night. Cheers. Cheers.